Thank you for tuning into our channel today. We're so glad to have you, and I know you're going to be blessed today as we look at this subject. If you do enjoy the program, would you mind just touching the old subscribe button up there or hit the bell? And if you like it, give us a like, and we'd love you to leave some comments. And if you're not so keen on looking at this face, and I wouldn't blame you too much for that, down at the bottom there, you'll see the details where you can listen to it, each of these on podcast, and you can listen in your car or listen at home or in your office, wherever. But I want to look at an interesting piece of scripture and see what we can do with this today. The Bible talks in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 13 of a situation where the Philistines came in and invaded the land of Israel. And firstly, Jonathan had a big victory and then the Philistines rose up and they came with massive numbers. I don't know how many chariots, 3,000 chariots, I believe. And they came in great number. And when they came in, they basically just stepped into the nation and took over. One of the first things they did uh, when the communist regimes rose up in Russia or wherever and, and communist nations so often the intellectuals were taken out and this was taken out and anyone that was seen as dangerous would be taken out and killed or put away somewhere but here one of the first things they did the Bible says in verse 19 they took out the blacksmith There was no blacksmith to be found in the nation of Israel. The reason for that was that the Philistines said to themselves, they're the sword makers, they're the weapon makers. They were the ones who made shields and and bucklers and spearheads and, and swords and so on. They were the weapon makers. And so the Philistines said, we don't want them having swords or spears. They took the weapons disarmed them and then said, if you want to get anything done, you want to get a, a mattock or a, uh, whatever you're using for your work, an ax or a plowshare or a sickle, then come down to us and we will use our equipment. The forge was taken out of the nation. The forges that made weapons were gone. The forge of fire was gone and the mattock or the the files of maintenance. And so often churches and denominations that have started in tremendous fire have lost their fire and they go from a forge of weapon making to a place of maintenance. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 15, God said to Israel and the Jews there, he said, I will make you a sharp threshing instrument Uh, I think it says a threshing sledge in the New King James. The King James says, I will make you a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth, sharp teeth that will thresh a mountain, not just say to it, get up and move, but thresh it to powder. I believe that God is wanting to raise up powerful weapons in the Holy Ghost that are going to not just speak to mountains, but powder mountains. God is looking to raise up people in these days. In this critical hour of world history, God is getting ready to raise strong, sharp, threshing instruments, people that are alive with the power of God, that have got an edge in their word, that have got an edge in what they speak, that have an authority and a power and an anointing and are carrying the fire of God. But you know, those weapons are not going to be forged in a dead church. They're not going to be forged in churches of maintenance. They're going to be, ch- they're going to be forged in churches that are actually a forge like a blacksmith shop. God wants the church to again become a blacksmith shop. He again wants it. And I'm, I'm old enough now to remember I lived in a place called Bendigo in Victoria. And as a young boy, there were still lots of horse and carts around. That's scary to think back. Our greengrocer came with a horse and cart. There were horse and carts going up the street uh, back then in the, in the, uh, in the 50s. And I remember well that uh, there was still a blacksmith shop near our school. And I would walk home from school and sometimes we'd go in and we'd stand there in the door of the blacksmith shop and look in there and the old blacksmith with the hammer was holding the red hot steel with the tongs and whether it was a horseshoe or whatever it was and he would bring down that hammer and the sparks would fly and the place was full of steam and he had that big bellows, great big leather bellows and and he would uh, pump those bellows and put oxygen under the coals and then work away with the steel. You see, steel 
has to be hot, has to be red hot to be worked with. You can't shape a weapon or make a sword or make a spear unless it's red hot. And unless a church is full of the heat of God, weapons are not going to be forged. It's not going to happen. If you go with me, please, to the book of Isaiah, and I'm looking at uh, Isaiah 44, and we'll just deal here with how the blacksmith works. The Scripture speaks of the blacksmith. And I used to love watching them. I used to love the smell of that and the, the clang on the anvil of the steel and, and watching a piece of, of, of red hot metal being shaped to what the, the blacksmith was making. God is our blacksmith and He is shaping us. He is shaping us in the fire of the Holy Ghost. We need heat. So the blacksmith, the Bible says in verse uh, this is Isaiah, the 44th chapter, reading from verse 12. And it says of the blacksmith, the blacksmith with the tongs, those big metal tongs, he'd have to hold the, the, the thing from a distance because of the heat, works one in the coals. He works in the coals. And so the first thing that he does is get, hot, is get a, uh, a container of red hot coals. To get them red hot, there's a fire underneath and then the bellows on top would be pumping oxygen down onto those coals until they glowed. Then he would put the metal in amongst those those hot coals and the, the heat would go then into the steel. The steel would become red hot. And when it was hot enough, he'd pick it up and put it on the anvil and start to strike it and shape it. You can't work with cold steel. You can't work with steel that has not been heated. I love what it says in Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 6. It says, in that day, I will make the tribes of, or, or literally the clans of praise or the tribes of Judah, I will make them as a sharp, uh, sorry, as a shovel of white hot coals cast in among the sticks Hot coals. The Bible speaks a lot of hot coals. Isaiah says, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. And the angel came with a coal from the altar and touched his lips and turned him from a, a man who claimed that he was a man of unclean lips to a man preaching under the undiluted power, prophesying under the might and the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So the Bible says the blacksmith works with tongs in the coals. And so he has the piece of steel that's going to be shaped into a sword or into a spear down there into the coals until it becomes red hot. And then he fashions it with hammers. My Bible says in Jeremiah 23, the word of God is a hammer and a fire. It's a hammer that comes down on that steel, shaping it and, and, and moving it, shaping an edge, big hammers, fine hammers, working to shape that steel. You see, in a church, a preacher can only bring the hammer down with the strength that is determined by the heat that's in the room. There's no heat of the Holy Ghost in the room. If there's no power of the Holy Ghost through prayer, through the oxygen from the bellows of God, through prayer, down onto the coals, heating them up. He can only really preach a mild word. There are churches where you can go and preach and the harder you preach, the more the crowd like it, the more the sparks fly. There's almost a shout from the crowd, shape us, shape us, we don't care. Bring the hammer of your word, mould us and shape us. Other churches, if you brought that word down, people would complain and moan because it would just bruise the steel. How do we get that heat into a church? How do we get the heat in there? Well, too often people come to church hoping to catch some fire when they get there. Imagine how strong it is when people come to church and they're already prepared and through the week they've been in the presence of God, they've been in the Word of God, they've been in fasting and prayer and they come to church and as they come, they come carrying divine fire. They come with the supernatural of God burning on them, carrying something supernatural in their belly, coming to share something and bring something and as they sit in church, there's a heat that people in the row next to them, people sitting next to them begin to catch the heat 
that's on them and they get warm enough so that when the preacher gets up, he doesn't have to bring a delicate hammer, that a woke hammer, a, a weak hammer that's just going to you know, tickle their ears and give them something nice to listen to. Too many churches, the Bible says at the end of the days, people are just going to pick out preachers for themselves that tickle their ears. We don't need our ears tickled. We need the heavy hammers of God to come down and shape us and mould us and bring us into a place where we're not just ordinary Christians coming to church to get our ears tickled, but we become a people with a passion to get out there like a sharp sickle into the harvest, making an impact under the fire and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the blacksmith works with the strength of his arms. I want the strength of God's arms. I want the strength of his hand. I want him to take me in his hand and make me an implement in his hand. I remember the jawbone of the ass picked up by Samson, a dead, lifeless piece of a jawbone of an ass picked up in the hands of the king. When, when Samson picked up that jawbone under the hand of God, it became a weapon and a power. When God picks you and I up, he goes into the blacksmith shop, he starts to shape us and move us with the strength of his arms. And every now and again, we've got to say, God, work with me, shape me. God, shape me. Let the strength of your hands as a father with my kids. There were times when I was strong with my kids. There's times when I had to be strong with them. But in that strength, there's a shaping and God is going to put strength into our lives. He wants to make you a sharp threshing instrument, my friend. He wants to shape you in the coals. He wants our churches to be a place. If you're a pastor and you want to have revival, a man came to Spurgeon one day and said, how do I have revival? He said, son, get on fire for God. People will come miles to watch you burn. You can only take people where you've gone yourself. And if you're not bringing heat from the pulpit, there's going to be certainly no heat in the congregation. The Bible speaks here of the, of the, of the blacksmith who's hungry, his strength fails, and he drinks no water and he's faint. And so he's got to keep drinking of water and keeping himself hydrated. And as a preacher, I've got to, as I'm working in the things of God, I've got to keep myself supernaturally hydrated with the water of God. What do we need in our church today? We need the strength of the heat of God. We need the hammers. How do we get the hammers? We get them by studying the Word of God, by getting in His Word, living in His Word, until it goes from just token Word to the sort of Word that is brought down on people's lives is going to shape them and change them and make them into an instrument of power. God is wanting his church to come back to a place of being a blacksmith shop. He wants it to come back to a place where it's not for maintenance, but it is a place where weapons are being forged and sharpened and sent out to do something into our streets, into our cities, into the nations of the earth. God wants to do something great in your life and mine. I want God to work I want to step into his forge and allow him by the heat of God to shape me so that I can achieve everything that he wants to do in me. He wants to make you and I a sharp threshing instrument having teeth. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning into our program. Trust you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. God bless you. Be strong for God.